Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fitness Philadelphia. I'm Dr. John Herding. And today, as always, we have another very special guest, Jeff Schumacher. How are you feeling today, Jeff? I'm good, man. Thanks for thanks for having me on. I'm excited to uh to to get talking. Absolutely. We we've been we've been friends for a while and and you've been doing some great stuff in the Philadelphia fitness community um since you were an undergrad with some of the great internships that you had. Um, but now your current role is your general manager of Gage, Gage Strength and Conditioning in Westchester, um, and now partner in um, Engage personal training studio or group fitness studio. I'll let you ex- explain what you guys are doing with that um, in Malvern, Pennsylvania. So that's an exciting new venture um, for you. So I'm excited to see where you're able to kind of take that in the future. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's it's it's an opportunity that we are pumped for. We just we just opened our first smaller training studio in Malvern. Like you said, it's been it's been two weeks and things are going well. It's kind of a new. Um, a new venture for myself and, and and Devin who owns Gage Strength Training. And, you know, we're trying to just take our brand all through Chester County and, and up through the main line and, and try to introduce, you know, our style of training um, to people outside of Westchester. So, um, you know, the plan is to to do a couple more of these as things go, but Malvern is, is open and running and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to see where that goes. So since we've kind of gone down that path, Jeff, do you mind kind of um, before we get into some of the more personal stuff about you and and what you've done, um, just going into a little bit about what Engage is. And like you just said, you want to open up the community further to like your guys style of training. Can you kind of explain what that is and and why Engage? I think it's a great thing. I think it's great for the community. I think you guys are doing a great thing. But why it's a different perspective on fitness that you're now bringing into the community on a, like a more personal level, almost with the studio type feel. Yeah. So we are, you know, what engage is it's, it's more or less capturing the the best thing we do here at our headquarters, gauge strength training, uh, which is our small group personal training program. So that is, you know, similar to what a lot of places do with small group training, where it's, you know, up to, for us, it's up to six people working at the same time. Um, where they're able to get a personal approach in their training, getting hands-on coaching. You know, it's not like a, a big um, hit class or CrossFit class or, um, you know, boot camp style class. It's much more tailored to, you know, people's individual needs, their injury history, their goals, you know, that type of stuff. So we're able to give, you know, that personal approach um, in a setting that is still, a group setting. So the culture is there, the environment is still fun. It's engaging, um, you know, and it's not the the price point of a one-on-one personal training. So it's something that we've uh, pretty much focused our business plan on for, I would say the past five years with like uh, amazing success, you know, it took a long time for us to get our clients to buy into that style of training because we were, we were that group class model. Um, and we were able to get, you know, our members to buy into a, a, a style of training and not just working out, you know, so we're able to incorporate, you know, all the principles of <clears throat> my background, our coach's background in traditional strength conditioning to, you know, an adult population. And finally, um, you know, now we're able to kind of get our system dialed in and, and spread that out, you know, throughout the area. Yeah, and I think that's what's really cool is you're getting a personal training feel at a lower price point, but then you're still getting the camaraderie and the the group fitness aspect of it where, you know, if you're not showing up to a session, your friend's going to call you or the person working out next to you is going to push you a little bit harder. So you're getting the best of both worlds where you're getting a personalized fitness session at a lower price point, but also getting the camaraderie of a group fitness class. And I think that's a great little product that you guys have created and you guys have shown through gauge um that you've been able to get great results in the population that you serve um and now bringing it further into the um, community i think that's that's an amazing thing that you guys are doing and and i'm excited to see um kind of how it evolves and develops over the next couple of years yeah i mean it's been it's cool. been a, a super fun you know experience kind of creating something that that uh that we can, you know, expand on now. 
Yeah. So let's get back. Let's dial back a little bit. And um, typically I'm not giving out, I'm not doing people's bios because you guys are going to give a better bio for yourself than I ever would. Can you kind of tell everybody um, kind of your origin story, what got you involved in fitness um, and then what brought you to gauge and then what you guys, you touched on it a little bit, but, um, and I touched on it with Devin, who was our very first fitness Philadelphia pod, um, episode, but you guys have created something very special in the Chester County community. So can you kind of talk about how you came to be where you are and what got you involved in fitness? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think I got into this field and, and the same way a lot of coaches do, which was growing up an athlete, you know, I feel like this is the same intro that every strength conditioning coach gives on every podcast, but growing up an athlete and then inevitably getting hurt and spending time in the training room. So I was, I played football and lacrosse growing up and, and suffered like a series of uh, shoulder dislocations throughout um, the back half of my high school career. So I spent a ton of time in the training room uh, after school, getting treatment, you know, in between seasons and everything. And, you know, when it came to picking what I wanted to go, you know, to school for athletic training just seemed like the most logical option. It was, it was something that would keep me involved with uh, sports and allow me to work with athletes and, you know, all that type of stuff. So I started out um, at Penn state as an athletic training major and the program they run up there is, is really good. They do a great job of getting you involved um, in shadowing and internships and, and everything like that. So I was able to start working with sports teams, you know, almost immediately. So working with men's and women's basketball um, and a couple other sports up there, volleyball and wrestling and, and some of like the big, the big time sports up there. So it was very, it was a very cool experience. And as I went through, spent a lot of time in the athletic training room. And then, um, then from there, you know, the strength and conditioning rooms as well. And that's kind of when I spent the time, you know, in the, in the weight rooms, I was like, I think this, this environment, this vibe is kind of more what I'm looking for when it comes to training athletes. I didn't really know strength conditioning was um, was a route until I got to, to Penn State and got to, you know, see the strength conditioning coaches and everything like that. So um, from Penn State, you know, I, I got a chance to, like I said, work, bounce around, work with the teams there. I went to uh, to Summit after that, which is, uh, you know, like a breeding ground for strength coaches in the Philadelphia area. So um, I spent a summer there, which allowed me to kind of get like the sports nerd out of me. You know, we got to work with professional athletes and stuff. And, and, and that was a good experience for me to be able to just get through that and realize that I can coach these people and, and that they're not just uh not just people I, I watch on TV. So that was a, that was a really good learning experience for me. Um, it kind of helped me get my feet as a coach. Right. And, um, from there I went on to spend a season with the Philadelphia union and, and Kevin Miller in the MLS. And at the same time was doing a master's degree in exercise science, uh, because that's what you needed to do in the strength conditioning field. You had to do internships, you had to get a master's degree. So I was just kind of checking the boxes and going through that um, with really no end in sight. So after I finished my internship with Kev, um, I was just looking for a job because I needed something to, to make some money in the meantime. Um, and there was a gym in Westchester, which I'd never heard of, Gage Strength Training, uh, that had a job posting. I went in, for my interview, Devin, I was wearing a suit. Okay. So if you didn't, you know, anything about us, that would not really fit our vibe nine years ago. Um, Devin was like in the middle of a workout, had totally forgotten about our interview. Um, he was deadlifting at the time, he was deadlifting like 495 or something. Um, so I went in, interviewed, uh, I got the job as an adult group classes trainer, which I had absolutely no no experience in at all, you know, and the, the job was supposed to be just a couple months, you know, I just needed something to make some money because I had some applications in at, um, Baylor and Notre Dame and Mississippi state and a couple other schools for like GA positions. Um, so I was kind of going through that process and interviewing at the same time. Uh, and then all that kind of aligned with me meeting, um, uh, my now wife who we started dating, she was finishing her degree at Westchester. And here we are 
nine years later and, you know, still at Gage strength training and still in Westchester. And, um, you know, it's just been a, an awesome opportunity to, to grow myself and grow the gym. And, at, you know, we, we, I started here, we had 1500 square feet probably and 75 members. And now we're at, you know, 6,500 square feet and 450 members. Um, and now opening up other gyms and now, um, you know, more on the business side than the coaching side. And so everything along the way has just kind of like lined up and it certainly wasn't the path I, I saw for myself. You know, I was, I was going to do that traditional strength conditioning route and, uh, you know, I'm glad I didn't, you know, it's just been a really cool experience to try to do different things. Um, and I still get to work with athletes, you know, I still, I, I outside of gauge and engage, I, uh, I work as the director of sports performance for um, a soccer club in this area, Penn Fusion Soccer Academy, which is um, like a big national level travel team. So I get to work with um, high school athletes and their development program on the soccer side of things is amazing. You know, they're, they're like college placements, like a hundred percent. So, um, you know, for me, that's just a really cool opportunity to scratch that coaching it. So that, that's kind of where I came from and, and where I'm at now. Um, and, and running the business side of things here with 10 employees, um, 450 members, and now, and now another facility. Yeah. And that, and that's awesome. And it's great to, I've, you know, in the length of time I've known you and Devin to see the, the transformation of the gym and to see what you guys have been able to do has been amazing. And I think uh, some of your, the experiences that you've had to this point have been able to position you in this great spot where, you can scratch the coaching itch with the on-field stuff with the pen fusion. You can kind of take some of the reins in the business part of it. Um, and I think, I mean, you probably say you have a better quality of life now than you would if you were still a college strength coach as you're starting a family and everything. So you've, it's been cool to see yourself work into this great position um, for yourself where you can develop professionally on the business side, the training side, and like as a family, uh, a family man and, and starting your, your family. And it, and it's awesome to see, um, see that growth. It's great. Yeah. It's things that, you know, have, like you said, it, the balance is, is perfect now. And, and I wouldn't, you know, I can't imagine what, what it would be like otherwise. You know, I certainly still have a lot of friends that I went to school with that are, that are doing what we went to school for, you know, strength conditioning coach, the NBA, NFL, everything like that. They love it. Um, but you know, I, I, I like to be home at four thirty in the afternoon every day to to play with my daughter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so tell me a little bit about um, Devin. And I talked about this, but tell me a little bit about now what your guys. You guys serve a very unique niche at Gage and now with Engage. What's the ideal client and and why does the like the training program and protocols that you've put in place and you've helped to develop. Um, Jeff through the years uniquely position you guys to train the population that you guys train and get such good results with the population you guys are known for. Yeah. I mean, our, so our target market, you know, that we've refined over the years, we kind of narrowed it down to it's, it's 35 to 55, um, 35 year olds, 55 year olds in, in our area that are looking for primarily fat loss and, you know, probably have been inconsistent gym goers in the past, really haven't had, you know, anything that they've totally bought into. Um, and nothing that's really given them any type of lasting success. They might have injuries or, you know, whatever limitations or, or, or issues that they've run into the past that hasn't allowed them to kind of grasp on anything. Um, those are the people that we found have, um, you know, given us um, the, the, the best experience over the years you see the, the wall behind me is kind of filled with with those people and, and their results and the way that we've kind of created our training program has been to you know i think i touched on this before but to give like real you know training principles to everyday people you know i was running when we first started i was running group classes hit classes with like boyle cressy robertson principles and we were the only place in the area doing something like that. Um, and it was like real training. Um, and so now that we're doing more structured small group training, we're able to dive into that way deeper. 
um, and build out like actual periodized programs for people to focus on whatever their goals are. And that's just not something that most um, gyms or studios in, you know, the micro gym space or boutique fitness, whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, are really doing. You know, it's, it's still that traditional, hey, come in, we'll do a workout. You know, this is today's workout and we'll go from there. Um, and don't get me wrong. That's still something that has um, benefit because people love to come in and get their butts kicked, you know, butts kicked and sweat. And we still do that. You know, we still run our large group training like it's a hit class at any other gym. You know, it's just the movements we use um, are going to be are going to look a lot, uh, you know, different than than what you would see, you know, at most big, big box gyms, you know, so I'm not, you know, we're not getting in down into the nitty gritty of like balloon breathing, right. In in a group class, but you know, during our cool downs, people are, are probably going to do some kind of diaphragmatic breathing. Perfect. And I know for a lot of people out there listening, there's, there's a couple exercises that you guys, because of the population you serve will not do in, in your classes. Um, can you give a little bit more insight into why you've chosen not to do those exercises and what those specific exercises are? Because I think there's a lot of people out there that might be drawn into the facility just because they, you know, they dread a couple of those exercises that you guys have chosen not to include in your program still with getting great yeah, results. Man. Yeah. Talk about burpees. So burpees is the biggest one, right? Don't do burpees. Uh, and we don't run, like we don't do any type of running. We might, we, we give it as an option, right? We don't do any type of jumping exercises. So everything is is low impact, um, which does not mean low intensity. You know, we like to tell people that we're low impact, but, you know, we're not low intensity. You can still, you know, we're still going to give you exactly what you want and what you're looking for. Uh, but at the same time, we're not going to beat you up. So we'll have, you know, it wasn't until we really instituted that, that, uh, you know, we use those those exercises in the initial consultation, and, and you know, every time someone's like, "Oh my gosh, thank God!" That's the that's the one thing I was not looking forward to, or that's the one reason uh, I left the the other gym I was at. And um, you know, it's something we did for so long. It's it's just uh, again, you're running these these group classes with twenty twenty five people. You know, sometimes you 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 do what you got to do with, with lack of space and lack of equ equipment. I get it, you know? Um, but it's something that has set us up again, as a little bit of a differentiator between other, uh, gyms in our area that we just don't do them. Uh, and it's been, it's been nothing but, you know, a good thing for us and our marketing side and the, and the members love it. Yeah, I think that's great. And then I think also one thing that we definitely have to touch on is, the and maybe that the the choice not to do those um has helped to foster this but you guys have built this great community um both inside the gym and then with some of the community outreach programs that you have like you guys are very community centric um and and you know i would hazard to guess like with your 450 members i wouldn't be surprised if you and devin know most of them by name and their kids and all that just because um, when people come into the gym, it feels like family and you guys have crafted your, your logo around that. You can see it on your shirt, right? If you can oh. explain that a little bit, as well as your tagline, um, you know, can you talk about the, the power of relationships and the community that you guys have been able to build? Because I think on top of some of the outstanding train, like your training model, the, the type of training that you're doing, and you're always looking at Con Ed, like you mentioned some of those names, like the Mike Boyles and the Mike Robertsons and the Eric Cressys, like those guys are leaders in the field that if you're an up and coming strength coach or personal trainer that doesn't know those names, like you need to to start reading up on them right now. That's Those are typically some of the names I'm giving to an up and coming physical therapist or strength coach when they ask what should they be reading. Um, so you're always kind of, you're, you're continuing to go back to your roots and the strength and conditioning and, and furthering your education, but then um, the power of relationships and, and the, the direction the gym's gone with building that community, both inside and outside of the gym. Um, can you speak to like why the logo is the way it is, the tagline, and then 
how the community focus in the gym has really helped you guys succeed? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, like you said, with the, with the education side of things, you know, none of that really matters. Um, uh, if you can't build a relationship and trust with someone, right. You can, you can know everything in the world, but, um, our members aren't going to care, you know, if they, if they know you don't really care for them and you're, and you're more cared about, you know, care about the, the training side of things. So it, the, the culture piece of, of something, and it's, it's, I've heard other podcasts where, you know, I just heard a podcast last week where this guy was speaking on culture and he said, you know, you really can't design culture, can't create culture. Culture happens because, you know, you open a gym and people can work out there. I think that's true to an extent. You know, but I, I, I truly believe there are things that um, our staff does that really does build the culture and foster relationships um, from our, you know, we, we created core values that most of them revolve around our members and the community. You know, our, our number one core value is to make an impact. And, and we define that as being the best part of someone's day, um, and whatever that means for for all 450 people. And it's up to our staff to know what that means for each individual. Because for some people that walk through the door, the best part of their day is just going to be walking through the door and getting to spend an hour with our trainer, Nick, and you know people in their 330 small group session. And for the next person that walks through the door, the best part of their day is gonna be ripping 405 off the floor on the deadlift. And you have to be able to provide the best part of someone's day to both those people in the same session. Um, and to be able to do that takes a lot, a lot of skill, right? And, um, you know, the simple things that, that we try to, to hit every single time uh, someone walks through the door is, you know, saying hi, saying hi to, to that person, saying their name, you know, someone's, someone hearing their own name is like the sweetest sound in the world to them, right? So saying their name when they walk in, um, no matter what, right? Um, and then providing that best part of someone's day, whatever that means for that person. We have notes on our clients. We have we run disc, um, you know, personality assessments on all our clients, where we we can diagnose exactly what each person wants out of the session, and we use that um, as a tool the same way we would with their training programs and whatever. We use that that personality assessment just as much as we use their squat assessment, you know, the disc is, is much more powerful than the, than the FMS uh, was ever for, for us. So, um, you know, we use that. And then the last thing is saying goodbye, thanking people for, for coming in, thanking them for taking time out of their day to, to spend with us. You know, they, there's only so much time, you know, most of our, most of our members have families and, and are busy and, you know, they're coming here three times a week. We want to thank them for, for trusting us with, with their training. Um, as we've evolved, you know, you spoke on the logo. Our logo used to be a bending barbell with, with, with weights. And, and it just, it fit what we were in the beginning. Um, but it didn't really fit where we were, you know, five or six years ago and, and kind of what we created. So we changed that to this, like, um, you can see it on my shirt here. This is our Olympics logo, but it's a heart. Um, it still has that barbell because that's still important to us. It's still at the, the root of what we do, but we are that, you know, little gym, big heart, which is, which is our slogan. We're still a little gym, even though we've grown to 6,500 square feet and all this, like we've continued to grow, but at the, at the root of everything, we're still just a small business in the community. Um, and our members are, are that heart. You know, we have members that have been here longer than I have, um, almost, almost 10 years. And, mm -hmm. and um, you can't really say that about, about anything, you know, let alone, let alone a gym. So, um, again, the community, there is part of it that just happens naturally when you get people in the area, um, you know, coming together and doing something. But, you know, I really think the, the staff we have and what we prioritize, um, the little things, right. But the core value of just making impact has, has allowed us to, to grow. And, you know, our coaches can't go out in Westchester without running into, you know, gosh, 20 people, you know, mm -hmm. like it, it's a good thing and a bad thing, uh, sometimes, but, uh, you feel like, you feel like the mayor of Westchester, um, and she trains here as well. But, uh, 
but yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a fun ride and it's been really cool to, to just, you know, it's get a chance to like build relationships. And that's the, that was, was the thing that uh, initially I was the coaching side of things. And you can ask my wife and you can ask Devin, like, I did not enjoy that part of things initially. You know, I wanted to coach people and I wanted to tell them that if they weren't doing a good job, then I wanted to tell them that because that's what my experience was. And it took me a, like, I would say it took me a year or two. And some people would say it took me eight years, but it took me a couple of years to like soften up and realize like, Hey, people are actually can be here to hang out too. Like, mm-hmm. it's not just about the, the, the X's and O's of training. They could care less. No, they, they don't know what training means. They're here to work out or get out of the house for an hour, you know? Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's allowed me to soften up for sure too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that speaks to um, like the level of support that you guys give. And so, you, and you're wearing the GST Olympic shirt, like you guys put together all kinds of community events you have um, for the, both the gym members and the community. So you have like your GST Olympics, which I believe is an annual thing. You do movie nights, you do um, community service where it's the coaches and the gym members going out in the community to do some of that stuff. Um, and I think those are all great ideas to further solidify both the community inside the gym um, and then get out into the community to say, hey, you know what? Like we're, we are this small business that does genuinely care about um, bettering the community around us. And um, and I think that's, again, that's why you guys have done so well in expanding your reach. And that's why the mayor of Westchester trains there, I'm sure, because the support that you give to both your members and then expanding that into the community with some of those annual events or those quarterly events, um, I think it's an amazing thing. And it really does um, show that you guys, you just care on multiple levels. Yeah, it's uh, the events. And I know Devin spoke on this and when you did your podcast with him, but we'll do a, a social event for our members every single month. We do those annual events. Like you said, the Olympics, we just had them last week. It was, it was awesome. It was, it was, you know, bigger, better than last year. Uh, and then we had the gauges, which is like our award ceremony, um, which you always sponsor. So thank you for, for doing that and, and coming out to, to the gauges, but every one of our members will get an award. So, you know, we, we had this year close to 200 people come out. Uh, they get to dress up. We get catered, um, dinner and open bar and a band and a DJ and a dance floor. And it's just like, you know, that's where the community happens. Right. And, and there's not many gyms that are doing that. Right. So you're, you're like you said, like people, it took you a little bit to realize it's not about the X and the O's always. It's about the relationships and the community that you build. And sometimes like, if you're going to be the best part of somebody's day and, um, maybe they just want to come and hang out at a movie night or at the gauges. Um, but it's, it's great that you have that relationship where I, and it, you know, I can absolutely see it from the coach's point of view when they go out in Westchester and they know everyone, like I, sometimes I feel like that's the same. I can't go out without seeing someone, but um, it just, it's, it's just such a great thing that you guys have been able to build and that your members want to hang out with you outside of the gym but also come and get a great product where they're seeing the results of losing weight. And, and you, you know, all of the air realms of wellness where um, if you get into the gym, just improving quality of life. Um, it's great. It's a great thing that you guys are doing. No, thank so, you. so what about so you, you guys also, um, It's, you know, as you know, it's not just the fitness part of the workout part um, of weight loss that that or that causes the weight loss. A lot of times people have to dial in their nutrition and you guys provide nutrition services as part of the membership, if I'm correct. Right. Yeah, we do a every every member will do like initial nutrition consultation uh with with one of our staff members and then we'll do um you know, we have an in body which which helps our members track everything so percent body fat muscle mass um and we use that as a as a tool for ongoing um you know coaching and counseling uh and then 
after that nutrition consult, you know, we give them resources to get started with, you know, changing their, you know, nutrition habits. And that's what we, that's what we view it as, you know, it's more um, habit building and habit coaching versus uh, macros and, and that type of thing. It's, again, it's just what, it's just what fits with our demographic and, and clients that uh, are, you know, less interested in measuring their food um, and more interested in just uh, developing or working on a habit um, that that might improve their health and get them closer to their goals. So uh, we try to we try to say, you know, again, sounding cliche, but like a, a holistic approach that encompasses more than the hour they're spending working out, and, and we want them to build habits on nutrition and on sleep and on uh, lifestyle factors that they can incorporate to just work on overall wellness and, and not just the exercise piece. And, um, you know, I think that hits home with a lot of people where, you know, if they can't make it here to the gym for a workout one day because something comes up at work or with their family, that's okay. You know, then they can do their meal prep instead, or they can, you know, take a, take a walk and, and do, you know, we just did a, a challenge in May that led to, um, Memorial day where, uh, we, you know, part of that was working out, but part of it was, um, doing 10 minutes of some kind of mindfulness exercise, uh, could be meditating, could be going for a walk, mm-hmm. could just be, you know, whatever. Um, it also was drinking, you know, a gallon of water and, um, you know, writing in a journal and doing these things that don't include working out. And so, uh, whether it's nutrition or whether it's just a uh, general, um, you know, wellness practices, we, we, uh, we try to get all of our members exposed to as much of that as possible because, um, you know, the workouts are great, but it's not the only piece. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and that just speaks to you guys are thinking outside of the box by giving all of your members, you know, the disc personality, um, assessment so that you can figure out how they're going to best receive coaching. Um, you're talking about you're not just doing a challenge for Memorial Day that involves getting to the gym so many times. It's making sure you're hitting some of these hydration metrics, these nutrition metrics, the mindfulness metrics. So you're focused on holistic health. Um, and I think when you're target, when you're looking at that population of the 35 to 55, they're all dealing with so much, especially as work through COVID and um you know, the families and work, there's, there's so many different stresses and you guys are doing a great job of trying to take things off their plate and help them calm down so they can take care of themselves first so that they can d- take all those stresses head on without adding the stress of getting to a gym, to the gym or um, feeling stressed about working out um, and letting that pile on to what they're already dealing with. Can you speak to, we've been getting into with some of these interviews kind of the pivots and now because it's some of the new offerings you guys might have because of COVID, you guys seem to not only survive during COVID, but thrive with um, your ability to pivot, bring some of the offerings online. And I believe you guys still continue to do that um, to make sure that your members, no matter where they are, can continue to receive a quality product and not feel like they're they're missing time in the gym or not hitting their nutrition goals when they're not with you. Can you kind of speak to how you guys were able to pivot and, and come out of COVID on, on the other side as strong as ever? Yeah, absolutely. So gosh, going, going back to you know, the original shutdown, I think we shut down on a Friday and we ran our first zoom session. I ran the first zoom session on Saturday morning at eight o'clock in the morning. I never, had used Zoom my entire life, but we, we, we went right to the Zoom. We rented out, you know, we rented out our whole gym, all the equipment, barbells. We had a member, uh, we had a member take a squat rack off the wall and put it in his truck and install it, you know, at, (laughs) in his garage. So we like, everything was available. Everything was available. Right. So everyone had equipment, which made the coaching side of things super easy. Um, we kept doing our small groups. So, 
everyone got custom programs like they were getting here. And we did small groups on Zoom. We did large groups on Zoom. We did workouts in the park. You know, so we, we did all of that stuff. And then as we reopened, I would say the, the thing that we are still doing that we kept, and I've heard other coaches talk about this and, and gym owners, is we created a pod system for – um, our large group and our small group, but we're keeping it in our small group. So we have six, you know, six people in a session. Um, we set up and we used, uh, kind of did a ghetto. We did a, we just did it with painters tape and we made six, six boxes and every one of those training spaces had everything they needed for their workout. So it's going to have a squat rack and it's going to have a bench and it's going to have a barbell. And it's going to have a landmine. It's going to have your dumbbells, your kettlebells, your bands, whatever. Um, and so you don't have to move at all. Uh, everything is set up for you. The coaches come to you, everything comes to you. And, and we've kept that and it's made our product so, so much better because the coaches have everything in front of them now, instead of all of our members being everywhere um, and all over the place. And as far as the virtual side of things, we kept doing virtual training up until uh, last spring. And so for now, um, our, all of our members have access to all of those workouts. Those are hundreds of different uh, Zoom workouts that are on YouTube. And uh, we have a Google Drive sheet that has all of them. So if people go on vacation, they literally have, I don't even know the number, but I'm going to say, you know, close to 300 different workouts that they can do. All of them are 45 minutes or, or, or longer. Um, that can be done with uh, body weight or with a, one kettlebell or with one dumbbell or something. So, you know, I know we still have people um, taking advantage of those and um, everything we did do with the training spaces allowed us to um, reopen and build our membership base back up faster because people felt comfortable Um and we weren't making any sacrifices with the training. The training was probably better. Uh, we certainly, it, it, it allowed us to look at what we were doing and make things uh, more efficient and, and simpler um, and more effective. And, you know, it was certainly uh, hard, but it, it was a good thing in the sense that it allowed us to create systems. And I know our membership, base grew from the fact that they saw how hard that we, we worked to keep trying to do what we were doing. Um, you know, keeping all of our staff on and, and, and like I said, reopening safely and, and, and those things that we're still doing, you know, as far as the systems wise, we wouldn't be able to have grown to 450 members without those things. You know, if we shut down, we had 200 and, um, you know, maybe 280 members. Uh, and so, you know, we, we've gained almost 200 members in, in two years. That's amazing. And I think what's actually really cool, and I, I don't think I've heard of any other gyms doing this, is that you kept the pod system. Because when I was a trainer, you're working in a busy clinic, like your people are all over the place, they're going over to the band rack, then they're coming back to the you know squat rack. And there's just all this crisscross of people when you have people in the gym, slash like and you had the trainer who's trying to get around to people and get maybe get equipment for some, one person. I think that's that's a great thing that you guys have done and kept where um, you can eliminate all like the people running into each other and you just have your equipment there and you can just roll right through the exercises without adding that extra little step of, oh, where's that band? Oh, Jeff's using it, so I have to go find it or wait for him to finish a set. But instead, everybody has their own set of equipment. And I think um, that's awesome to just kind of streamline the process. And, um, you know, maybe at the most basic level, someone's busy, they have to run into the gym, run out of the gym because they're they're fitting it in between work and getting a kid to soccer practice. They can come in, bang out their workout without adding time to find all the different stuff or wait for someone to finish a set. And then, you know, they've gotten their great workout and they're on their way. Yeah, I tell people when it comes to small group training, like on a logistical side of things, um, if people have to wait for equipment and share equipment, that's when it that's that's when there there is like a, a lack of perceived value. Um, so with small group, especially with engage, what we're doing is 
we have to make sure there's enough of everything for all six people so that it still feels like personal training um, because you're not sharing, you're not waiting. You know, it's, it's, it costs more uh, to do it, but it certainly pays off. People stay for longer. Yeah, it's absolutely a better product. hundred percent. Yeah. Perfect. So you talked about um, like engage and you guys are planning on, you know, proof of concept now and then putting it around the, you know, opening more. What's next for you? Um, I would assume that's what's next for you on the professional level. If not, um, I'd love to get some more insight into that, what you're doing, because you're doing some great stuff. But what's next for you personally, professionally, as you continue to kind of make your way in the Chester County community and fitness community as a whole? Um, Because I know you're you're doing some great leadership things too with like mentorships and interns and, but what's next for you, Jeff, um, as you continue to move along in your career? Um, yeah. So on the, you know, on the professional side, it is, it's building this engage brand and, and trying to replicate that. Um, and, you know, I think we'll get a lot better at it and it'll become easier and more efficient and, um, and we can kind of scale that. Uh, a little bit faster. So professionally, it is it's doing that. It is creating um, creating leaders here at Gage Strength Training. You know, because as Devin and I uh, go to expand our brand, we want to elevate the people we have here. Um, just so nothing you know skips a beat with with the service that we provide here. So creating um, creating some some great coaches and leaders at, at Gage Strength Training. Um, you know, we see the direction of you know, these two businesses as Engage being us getting out small group training, getting our model um, to more people, introducing uh, people to our community in the way that, you know, our trainers and, and coaches provide service. But then here, um, we want this gym to become a place that business owners and, and coaches come to learn from. Um, you know, we want to have this as a you know a destination for coaches that want to elevate themselves whether it's you know uh opening their own studio or um growing into a leader leadership position um at our gym or setting them up for doing something else you know if they want to go off and do something but they want to they want to learn how to become a, a coach you know they they can come here and do that or how they can create a career in fitness uh, because it's hard um, you know and that's something that that I've certainly been at the crossroads many times where it's am I do I still want to do this you know do I want to try to get into medical sales do I want to try to do this like every trainer has been there right the burnout rate is is a hundred percent so I want to help people that go through that you know, that are passionate about fitness, stay in it and create a lasting, a lasting career. Um, and then, you know, like I said, be also be on the business side of things and helping small business owners create, um, create something that, that they can grow and really make, um, you know, a legacy out of. So, um, you know, both Devin and I are, are, are really um, focused on that next step of things and, and, and helping people, um, both in fitness, but also in the business side and personal development. Um, you know, for me personally, it's, you know, growing, growing my family, you know, my wife and I have a, have a daughter that's, that's about a year and a half. Um, and, and we want to grow our family and I want to be the dad that is able to, to be home. And, and so it's going to take some, take some, some work and some time, but, uh, but these are the things that, you know, I think are really going to allow me to do that and kind of create the life, um, that, that I want. So, you know, I thank Devin for giving me all the opportunity in the world to kind of create, um, this unique, unique role, um, where I, where I was able to kind of grow into, uh, leading a facility. Um, uh, but then now, you know, eventually become a, a business partner, uh, and, and, and open businesses, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really great opportunity. I'm excited to, to get, you know, as many people involved with us as possible. Absolutely. I love it. Such a great mission. Um, so Jeff, we end each one of these episodes with um, a final five questions that we just kind of rapid fire and it gives people more insight into who Jeff Schumacher is. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah, let's do it. 
what would be your walkout song? Uh, okay, my walkout song would be Hit Him Up. Hit Him Up. Tupac, Hit Him Up. That, that would be my that's song. A good that, was one. Always, that was always my song. I think we're, I don't know, we're 20 episodes in and we don't get, we haven't gotten much rap, right? Oh, I think what? you're a rap guy. I think we share similar tastes in music, but most of the time we're getting like a hard rock or like a heavy metal song. We haven't gotten a ton of rap so far. No, nah, you're it's not going to catch me with, with anything like that. No. Um, what's your favorite exercise? My favorite exercise? Uh, gosh, uh, trap bar deadlift. I think that's, a, that's, the only, uh, that's the only movement I feel uh, strong at all on. Uh, with shoulder dislocations and long arms, I, I am the world's worst uh, bench presser and, and presser in general. So, uh, <laughs> the deadlift would be, would have to be it. Yeah. I'm right there with you. And I think we share similar body types. So I think a trap bar deadlift is where it's at for me. One, if you had to eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, this is easy. Uh, chicken wings. I, I love chicken wings. I will go far and beyond to find the best chicken wing i've been to buffalo many times for such uh fair and <laughs> let me tell you chicken wing when done right because most places you know make them terribly when done right chicken wings number one what's the number one spot so far um so i'd have to say where we went to in buffalo there's like Buffalo has a series of, of places, right? There's a place called uh, Bar Bill. There's a place called uh, Duff's. There's Anchor Bar. Um, there's a number of them. Uh, Anchor Bar, which is like the, you know, what people would say to Philadelphia is like the Pats and Genos. It is like the, you know, commercialized, whatever. I don't care. It was the best. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was the best and it's the wings are good. The people are, are awesome. It's like this little dingy bar. Um, it was, it was super cool. So anchor bar in Buffalo, uh, best wings. Love it. Do you have a guilty pleasure? What's your guilty pleasure? Hmm. Um, I really don't have, I don't think I have many guilty pleasures. I do like, I do like some good, IPAs, you know, maybe, maybe I am like a little snobby when it comes mm. to beer, but other than that, uh, you know, if you came to my house for, for food, you would think that like a family of, of birds live there, you know, with the amount of like nuts and seeds and like stuff that, uh, you know, we, we eat. So it's not, it's really not going to be a food thing. Uh, besides, you know, the, mm. the chicken wings I'll make on the Eagle Sundays, but, uh, I would say, you know, good beer. Perfect. Uh, what's your favorite thing about the Philadelphia area? It's the sports. You know, I, I said going into this, I grew up a sports fan and, and wanted to, to be around sports. And yeah, that's that's like the one thing that, you know, for sure, for sure has kept me in this area. You know, with, with so many of my, uh, you know, friends that, that um, you know, left the area, it, I know they're, they are so jealous, you know, when it comes to, uh, sports and football season and stuff like that. So it has to be the sports. It has to be the Eagles. It has to be the people and, uh, and everything, you know, the, the culture um, when it comes to sports fandom and stuff is it's, it's unmatched. Love it. Um, <clears throat> nice, Jeff. So is there anything you want to talk about? Do you want to share uh, in closing or do you want to share how people can get in contact with you? Um, if they want to reach out for some mentorship, some training, learn about engage, um, how, what's the best way that people can get in contact with you? Uh, the best way is probably I'll throw my email address out. It's just Jeff at gauge strength training.com. Um, that's gonna be the best way to, to get in contact with me. Uh, social media, I'm not super present there. If you want to see like pictures of me traveling and, and like, uh, Spotify, 
rap music and stuff, maybe follow my uh, my Instagram, uh, which is just J underscore ham 22. But for the most part, it's just email. You know, I, I'd love to to connect with anyone listening to this podcast that that took anything away from this, um, you know, and and kind of, you know, love to love to network and and meet people and and kind of see what they're doing. And as far as engage goes, you know, we have engage Malvern that's, that's on Instagram and, you know, we hope to, to keep, keep spreading. So you'll see uh, if you're in the area, I'm sure you'll see more and more uh, about that brand. But if you're a, a business owner or a coach or a trainer uh, and want to come out to, to Westchester, just, just please let me know. Perfect, Jeff. I appreciate you. Um, keep doing everything that you're doing. Um, it's great to see you grow and, and keep leading the charge. Thank you. Thanks, John. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. You got it.